Welcome to Data Demystified. I'm Jeff Gallick, and this is my series of tutorial videos on how to use SPSS to work with data. In this video, I'm going to show you how to conduct and interpret an independent sample t-test, where you would compare the means of one variable across two groups of data. As always, we'll be using the YouTube Viewing Habits survey that I created, and you can find both a link to the data file and a video tutorial of the data below. It's very typical that what we want to do is compare the average response to a question or the average value of a variable across two different groups. And to do that, we can use our independent sample t-test. So in particular, what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at the average response of one particular variable, which over here is the last one. This is the average opinion. I calculated that variable in a previous video that I'll link to below, but basically it's the average opinion across a series of questions asking about people's preferences towards YouTube. And in particular, I'm going to look at this as a function of gender. So if we look at the variable view and we scroll down to gender, we see that gender is coded in the following way. One for male, two for female, and three for other. What's important about t-tests is that you can only compare two groups. There are other analyses like ANOVA, which I'll cover in a different video, which will let us quickly and easily compare across many groups, but t-tests are limited to two. So I'm going to compare male versus female, and I'll ignore other for the moment. It's worth noting that male is coded one and female is coded two. I need to remember that because I'll need it for my t-test. So to run a t-test, first we'll exit out of here. We'll go up to analyze, compare means, independent sample t-test. And you'll see a few options here. First for test variables, we can include as many variables as we want, but I'm just going to limit us right now to this last option, average opinion. I'll put that over here in the test variables. And then you see down here, it asks me for the grouping variable. That's where I include gender. So I move that over here. And note that there's still something missing. We need to define what comparison to make because SPSS doesn't inherently know that it's gonna compare group one versus group two. It could be comparing group one versus three or two versus three. We have to tell it what we want. So under define groups, we say use specific values. We wanna compare group one to group two. Another option, which I rarely use, is the cut points option. Let's say you've got 10 different groups and you wanna compare the first five to the last five. Well, you could set a cut point of, let's say six. It would then group one through five and then six through 10 as separate groups. I don't find that very useful. I almost always use t-tests when I have two specific groups I identify as I've done here. One important thing is that the order does not matter. I could put two up here and one down here. It's completely symmetrical. All that's gonna matter is that I put two different groups in these spaces. So then I click continue. There's really nothing else to choose. There's no options that we need to select to make this work. So we click OK. And here's our output. So to interpret this output, let's start with this group statistics table. This tells us the number of individuals that fall into each category. So we had 361 males and 630 females. It tells us the mean response, the average response to the average opinion of YouTube on these two dimensions. And we get the standard deviation and the standard error for those values. What's worth noting is the test statistics are all down here. The very first thing we see, though, is we have this Levine's test for equality of variance. A t-test, or a basic t-test anyway, assumes that the variance is equal across our two groups. In this case, it's not. And we know that because the statistical significance level right here for our Levine's test is significant. It's below 0.05. The null hypothesis for a Levine test is that the variance is equal. We can reject that null hypothesis, and so we now have unequal variances. What that means is that rather than looking at this first row, which is labeled as equal variance is assumed, we have to look at the second row, which is equal variance not assumed. And then we get to our t-statistic. Our t-statistic is negative 2.027. That negative is really irrelevant. This is a symmetric test. That 2.027 corresponds to a statistical significance level of 0.043. In our convention of 0.05 being our cutoff for statistical significance, we would say that there is a significant result, which means that these two means up here, 5.61 and 5.75, are significantly different from one another. If I were to report this result, I'd report it as T, parentheses, 646.712. That's the adjusted degrees of freedom, given that the variance was not equal. That equals negative 2.027, and the corresponding p-value is 0.043. Beyond that, we see that right here, it's reporting the mean difference. That's just how different these two means are. That's just subtracting the two the standard error of that difference, and the 95% confidence interval of that difference as well. That's how you can compare the average response to a variable across two different groups. This is the point in the video where I'd like you to pause and try this yourself. In particular, why don't we do the same analysis across gender, so male versus female, but this time let's see if they differ in terms of age, which is right here. So go ahead and pause the video and give it a try, and I'll do it when you come back. Okay, hopefully you've had a chance to do that, and I'll do it as well. Under Analyze, Compare Means, Independent Sample T-Test. I'm going to reset this just so we're starting from the beginning and you can see how this all works. 
Under test variable, I'm going to include age. And again, I can include any variables I want or as many of them as I want. Under grouping variables, I'm going to reselect gender and define the groups as one versus two. I'll hit continue and then I'll hit OK. So here we see our analysis. We see that males were slightly older, 39.2 years old, than females who were 38.2 years old. We see that the variances actually are equal because the significance level is above 0.05, so we can use that first row. However, the T statistic being 1.16 has a corresponding p-value of 0.246, which is above our threshold of 0.05, so we cannot reject the null hypothesis, which is that the two ages are the same. And so we can conclude that these two ages right here are not distinguishable from one another, at least not with the data that we have. So again, independent sample t-tests are a very useful tool for comparing the average value of a variable across two and only two groups. If you want to learn how to use them across multiple groups, we'll cover ANOVA in a future video. That's it for this video. I hope you found this useful, and if you have any questions, please comment below, and I'll be sure to reply as quickly as I can. Aside from these tutorials, I'm on a mission to equip everyone with the information they need to thrive in our data-rich world. If you'd like to learn not just the mechanics of analysis, which these video tutorials focus on, but also learn the intuition behind the analysis you're performing, I strongly suggest you check out the other intuition-focused videos on this channel where I take the jargon out of statistics and data science and help you build a deep, intuitive understanding behind all the analysis that you're performing. I'll put a link below to a playlist of the videos that focus on just this. Finally, please take a moment to like the video, subscribe to this channel, and click that little bell icon so that you don't miss out on any new content that I put out. Thanks for watching.